this kind of dog when I was a kid. I grew up loving Bean. When he was little, this was actually his dream job. It's never occurred to me that it could be a job. Sometimes I still feel like that way. But I'm an adult. <laughs> Sometimes I convince myself that it's real. I love what I do. I make video games for a living. I thought it was really cool. Of course. My dad's games make people feel happy. Scared? It's time to get out. I'll come. Good. I'm actually working on an RPG. I'm working on a shoe. All right. Hey, everybody. I had to leave that in there because that was too cute. Um, this is the Bethesda Showcase, uh, hallmarked by uh, Bethesda Land. And uh, that's going to be coming up in just a minute for you. Uh, as you can see, all these games are from last E3. Uh, and actually, I think all the games that they show here have come out. So... Um, uh, I think, except for Quake Champions, I think that might be in here somewhere. But otherwise, all the games have come out, uh, and they're all known properties. Uh, which is maybe a little bit disconcerting to the average viewer who tunes in to this, expecting to see brand new games. Um, but there are some new things. Uh, not a lot of new things, but there are new things. Uh, this is one of the shortest conferences uh, that they had. And um, it's kind of funny because the subtitle for this uh, for this video was going to be uh, Bethesda Beth E3 Bethesda 2017 Showcase. Uh, don't blink or you'll, or you'll miss it because um, <laughs> it was literally that short. Anyway, so they, they're introducing Bethesda Land now. Um, this is basically the way that they're navigating uh, what they're offering in the showcase. Uh, that way... Uh, you can kind of have uh, some cohesion between one thing and the next without them after actually having to stop the video and talk, uh, which is really, really cool. Uh, I cut out Pete Hines there. Sorry, Pete. Uh, but he was just explaining that these are going to be two VR offerings that they're going to have coming up later on this year. Uh, we're starting out here with Doom, the VR version of Doom, uh, which would be absolutely amazing if you weren't teleporting everywhere. Um, you, they kind of went a little bit too far, I think, with this, uh, and they wanted you to actually, you know, have a tactile experience, uh, with your hands, but unfortunately, uh, as, you know, most VR setups, you can't walk around, uh, except for, uh, you know, very few. I think the Vive is the only one that you can actually walk around. So the fact that you can't walk around means you have to teleport everywhere, which is a, you know, tried and true, uh, VR trope nowadays uh, but I just think that it's kind of it takes away from Doom and it's not something that I would want to do uh, I would much have preferred them to have just a 3D uh, VR experience with the controller uh, which maybe they uh, tested and it makes people sick or something like that but I it, this looks like it would make people sick too because you're jumping you're flying into the air um, this is another thing uh, that, they ca that they're showing this is the uh, Fallout 4 VR, uh, which is actually, uh, I believe, you are using it has a, a possibility of controller support, um, although it does show the Oculus Touch. So it's I'm not sure which one you are, if you have a, a choice, or if you're locked into one or the other. 
Uh, if you do have controller support, I think that would be really, really cool. Um, if you don't, well, that's that's the way the, the cookie crumbles. But uh, I think it would be neat. Uh, either way, it's a full-blown game with uh, VR support, which is really cool. Uh, I don't know how it's going to play. Uh, I don't know what the frame rate's going to look like. Uh, I don't have any idea. I'm assuming that they're thinking of this being on the computer. So being as it's on PC, you might have a lot of headroom, headroom considering uh, right now I think Fallout, uh, you know, on a maxed out PC with like a really good graphics card and stuff like that, probably, you know, anything 10, 10 uh, 60 and above, or uh, for you Radeon folks, uh, 480X and above, I think you're getting probably close to 80 frames a second on a regular PC. So probably this will drop it down to 30 frames a second, but you'll still be looking at 1080p in both eyes, which would be really cool. Um, so that, that that would be that, that I think would be well worth uh, if it works out that way. I have no idea. Most people said last year, excuse me, I can't talk right now, uh, that the version of uh, Fallout 4 that they saw in um, that they were demoing, and I believe they were demoing it on Oculus. Or was it the Vive? I think it was the... I am want to say it was the Vive. That they were demo, demoing on the Vive. Um, they said that it worked really, really well. Um, that uh, they were using a controller then. But they said that it worked really, really well. So that's kind of cool. Uh, this is Elder Scrolls Online. This is the new expansion that's coming out. Uh, Morrowind. And uh, these are some YouTubers who got uh, the expansion uh, trailer early, uh, which I'm sure they were thrilled about, which I can't imagine why you'd be thrilled about getting a trailer early, but hey, what a not. Anyway, um, and of course, Elder Scrolls Online, if you don't know, doesn't look like that. Um, they'll show you real gameplay in a second. Um, <laughs> this is just, uh, you know, a little cinematic taste. Kind of like the difference between World of Warcraft, how it actually plays, and what all the cinematics look like. Here we go. Here's some gameplay. Um, I had a brief stint in Elder Scrolls Online, but uh, in general, I, you know, I played it for a little while, but I really uh, did not like it after a while. Uh, the graphics kind of were a turn off to me. They just weren't good enough. And uh, I always felt like I was playing, like, the 360 version, you know? <laughs> it seemed like I was playing, like, somebody gave me Skyrim, but, like, the 360 version of Skyrim, which I know doesn't exist. But, I mean, like, a really old version of uh, Elder Scrolls. Uh, not something that is up-to-date and new and, you know, has really mind-blowing graphics and stuff like that. It always just felt like, ugh, you know, it's, it looks all right, you know? And I still feel that way about it. It's like, oh, it looks all right, but um, not something I could invest hundreds of hours into. Uh, I have to say that it's very strange because I always pushed back on the idea of uh, World of Warcraft being so um, stylized and them never trying to do a more realistic look or feel. Um, and now I know why. Because uh, World of Warcraft actually still looks really good. Whereas a game like this, the graphics kind of were set when it came out. And they really can't go too far beyond that uh, without alienating players and, you know, having to do a lot of rebooting in the world and things like that. So, uh, you know, even if it does look better now than it did when it came out, it's only by, like, degrees. It's not, uh, it's not a big, massive overhaul. Uh, speaking of better graphics, we're going to be looking at... The Bethesda Creation Club, which is a thing for modders. Um, but these modders are actually employed by Bethesda. So they're not just your average person out there who decides to make mods, which I know is not an average person at all. Uh, but they're not just your average modder. They are people who Bethesda has plucked out and decided to pay. And uh, they're trying to get a return on their investment now by giving them a place to show their work and uh, be able to, people be able to pay for their work with credits. Now, how do you get credits? I have no idea. They haven't announced how you do that yet. 
The biggest thing with this though is that these mods are integrated into the game. So you can get achievements with these turned on. It's not like um, mods that we have now where uh, if you turn on uh, if you turn the mods on, that's it. you won't be getting any achievements. You can't use those saves uh, with um, you know through a main a, a, a playthrough that you would try to get achievements. As soon as you turn on mods on now, it shuts all that stuff off. Well, in this case, it doesn't do that because these are special. These are uh, these are more integrated into the game. They won't. Uh, they're talking about it. It won't cause any stability problems with your with your game. It's been uh, all the quality. You know, there's been a quality assurance pass and everything else. So that's kind of cool. Um, I have no idea any more about it than that. Uh, but it's coming this summer, so we'll be all finding out soon enough, I guess. You'll notice there's quite a lot of these little, these little black, uh, these little black transitions. Those are not mine. That that's for, comes from the conference. So uh, don't uh, don't think I added those. Because as you can see throughout this whole thing, BE3 is on the screen. So this is not uh, <laughs> it's not something that I did. Um, so this is the Elder Scrolls. Legends, which is the card game that was announced last year, and it came out last year uh, first in beta, and then they rolled it out into the regular, uh, you know, rolled it out into open beta. It was a soft launch. It's a free-to-play game. Uh, it's a great game. I really enjoyed playing it. I really enjoyed the story mode. Uh, I played it when it was in the beta, and it had the story mode. I believe that that footage is still up on the channel uh, for you guys to take a look at. Uh, I played until there was no story mode left. I really liked it. Uh, and they're saying that there's more story mode to come, uh, which sounds really cool. Um, I think that there's going to be some um, Dark Brotherhood story content, which is what I was just saying, which sounds really neat. I re really can't wait for that. Uh, obviously, the in-game tournament's not so much. Uh, coming next month, it's going to be on your Android and your iPhone, which is uh, a different. I don't know how they're going to do that, but we'll see. Uh, and then they're going to add an expansion to all this with Skyrim, uh, which is obviously going to come a little further down the line. Now, uh, as far as I know, this game, I mean, I would not want to play this game on my phone. I don't know how you, anybody would do it, but I don't like playing Hearthstone on my phone because my phone, you know, the area on my phone is just not big enough, I feel, for either one of those games. But maybe you have a really big phone. Maybe you have a Galaxy S8 or S7 that's real big, you know. Um, and so that that maybe would help you. But uh, for me, for my for my phone, not so much. Uh, if I wanted to play this uh, on a mobile device, I'd play it on my tablet. But uh, yeah, but uh, definitely on the PC is where I like to play this game. It it runs pretty well. I have a pretty bad old PC, and it runs pretty decently on it. It's uh. There's a little, a wee, wee little bit of, uh, of uh, you know, stuttering every once in a great while. Um, but otherwise, it runs really, really well. So uh, kudos to uh, Bethesda for being able to make a game that will run on my PC uh, <laughs> in 2016, as opposed to uh, all the games that will run on my PC, which most of them were put out uh, pre-2012, so... Uh, Good for them. Uh, all right. And I um, think now we're going to be getting into uh, the, uh, yeah, the Elder Scrolls on the Switch. And uh, this is, looks like really, really good. This is what they have up as test footage. Uh, well, you know, what they're showing as trailer footage for the Switch looks really, really good. Uh, most people have said that it is not the... Uh, special edition version that's going on the switch it's uh it's kind of a particular you know it, it's like a it's a different animal altogether it's not just the like the 360 version of it but it's also not the special edition of it it's like a, a third edition and i think this has to do with the fact that there's motion controls which hopefully you can turn off and amiibo support so, I mean, neither one of those things, obviously, were in the uh, in, in any other edition 
of the uh, of the game. So um, I guess that's uh, that's why they said it was a different version altogether. All right, now we're starting to get into the the meat of the conference, uh, kind of what you came here to see, kind of deal, you know. Uh, they kind of vary this up a little bit, but uh, you know they kind of hide the they hide the lead a little, uh, you know, because they, I guess they wanted to just sit there through the whole thing. I guess I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. It's kind of like you know um, prime time television or something. They're trying to trying to drop in the good stuff as much as they can. So this is um, a story in the Dishonored 2 universe. Uh, I've been thinking a lot about how I wanted to frame what I'm going to say about this because they don't give you hardly any information in the trailer. Um, all they do is talk very broadly about what's, what's going on. Um, this is the whaler ship captain. Uh, who is going through and doing this. She's saving this guy who is, I guess, the previous captain of that ship. Um, and they are going to go off and try to kill the Outsider. Um, and I thought this was DLC. Uh, when I saw this conference, I thought this was DLC. But I found out later on a uh, store listing page on Amazon... Um, and also just recently on uh, the PlayStation Store that this is actually a separate title, uh, much like Uncharted Lost Legacy is a separate title from the, uh, you know, from the Uncharted Thief's End. Now, how much uh, carryover there will be uh, for, you know, as far as... Because it doesn't even say Dishonored 2, it just says Dishonored... Uh, Death of the Outsider. So it might even be a prequel to before Dishonored 2. I don't know. Uh, I have no idea. Uh, don't don't take any of that as, as gospel because I have no idea. Uh, all I know is that it's coming out. It looks really good and it's going to come out in uh, September, which is absolutely great. I wish I had time to finish Dishonored 2 before that but I'll probably just be starting it around then so uh, <laughs> not gonna happen for me uh, I definitely want to play Dishonored 2 before I get into that game uh, you know just like I want to finish uh, Uncharted 2 uh, Uncharted Thief's End before I get into Uncharted Lost Legacy uh, even though I don't think you probably need to uh, this is um, <clears throat> This is Quake Champions, ladies and gentlemen. A game that is not out yet. It's in beta. And they're going to have a big esports tournament at QuakeCon uh, for it. Uh, with the prize, the, pro the prize pool being $1 million. So, uh, the question I have for them is this. Uh, considering this is just in beta, it probably hasn't been streamed too much. So how do you know anybody cares? Uh, I know that the people at QuakeCon will care, because probably most of them are going to be trying to get that $1 million. But normally, the way that you kind of accrue a prize pool is from sponsors and advertising and things like that. Well, if nobody wants to watch it, there's no reason to have sponsors or advertising or any of that because nobody's going to see it. Uh, well, I mean, somebody will see it, but, you know, not very many people. So anyway, uh, they're kind of banking on this being like they're talking a lot about the original Quake and they're saying, oh, yes, the original Quake was the first eSport and all this other stuff. And it's like, yeah, OK, that's fine. That's true. Uh, I would I would almost argue that Unreal Tournament was, but I that's just me. Um, but anyway, um, this is not that. This is something else. This is, it has, uh, it's a hero-focused first-person shooter. It's a, a hero arena shooter, which went out of style quite a while ago. So um, I'm sure that the people who are into it are really, really into it. But I don't know if that's going to translate into a million dollars. 
Um, I hope that the people who are competing with this in this really enjoy it and really have a good time and of course get their one million dollars somebody I'm assuming is gonna get their one million dollars so uh, that's awesome I mean I'm glad for the opportunity for the community but as far as a business decision I think this is nuts play now in the beta whatever guys soft launching it right into an eSport good luck with that so and now we have probably the second most uh, exciting uh, trailer that uh, we could have in this uh, in this um, in this showcase uh, we're coming up on it we're, we're, we're building towards you know the real meat but we, we're getting there this is really good this is evil within two uh, this is also and and the uh, just so you know the Dishonored uh, Death of an Outsider trailer is up on the website, as is this. Uh, so all you have to do is go to Hades Times, and you can see both of those. The link is in the description, uh, so you can just take a look. Um, and then, of course, the final uh, announcement, the big final announcement, is also in the on the Hades Times as well. Uh, the trailer's there, full resolution, all the deal. Obviously, with audio that you can easily hear. So you can enjoy that as well. So I'm not leaving this all up to you watching this. This is just kind of a summary. This is my little uh, this is my little E3 podcast for everybody. With pictures. See, isn't, isn't that better? I mean, podcasts with pictures are a lot better than... Um, podcasts that are just podcasts because i mean if it's just a podcast you're just listening to somebody's voice i mean yeah it's it's good you can listen to it in the car you can you know listen to it while you're running things like that but this you have a full audio visual experience you know what's better than that tv is better than radio everybody knows that anyway so um no more self-aggrandizing. Uh, this looks really good. Uh, I'm really interested in playing this. I did. N I was not able to play the Evil Within the first one, um, so I will probably. Hopefully, I'll be able to do that uh, on the PC towards the end of the year before this comes out. It's supposed to come out October Friday the 13th. Uh, so I'm hoping that I'll have time to jump into Evil Within and finish it before then, but. I don't know. That seems like that seems pretty hard, but we'll see. Got two games to finish before they come out later this year, which is probably not going to happen. But I would really love to. Uh, I'd also like to really live stream it so that everybody can enjoy it. Um, the uh, I, what I'm told is that the uh, after the patch, the uh, the PS4 version is really, really good, but I, the PS the the PC version is the best because uh, frame rates uh, that you can still you can you know you know there's enough um, there's enough that you can do to the game. I think you have to go into the INI file, but there's enough that you can do in the, do to the game that actually makes it run very stably and very well. Uh, so I can't wait to uh, can't wait to jump into that if I possibly can because that'll be really cool. Because uh, I've seen some of it, uh, but I've not seen all of it, and um, I'd really like to before this comes out, because uh, probably going to be one of the more different games, uh, especially coming out this year. Uh, you know, we did have uh, Resident Evil 7, but I think this is a good, you know, counter counterpoint to that. This is more like, you know, as far as I know... Uh, Evil Within 1 was a little more like Dark Souls than um, Resident Evil. Uh, although, it, they with 7, they there are some things, you know. There are some things, especially when you get into the higher difficulties of Resident Evil 7. So that maybe they are more alike than we think. So maybe this is an actual, you know, like, oh, well, as soon as they found out of the direction that Resident Evil 7 was going... They're like, well, maybe we could bring back, you know, the evil within. That would be good. 
Yeah, I don't know who's the director on this game. I wonder if it. I don't know if it's the original director. Uh, if it is, then we know that it isn't a uh, a reactionary project. But uh, I'm sure we'll find out more about it uh, as time goes on and as the uh, as we get closer to October. I'm sure they will really be pimping it out. You know, pimping it up, making uh, everybody very much aware of uh the game because it the first one didn't sell very well so i'm sure they're going to try to rectify that problem with uh the new one and now this is their one more thing moment and man alive it is is it one more thing this is uh this is great i'm gonna let this play turn up your volume as high as it can go I would say that was probably one of the best parts of the entire conference. Just that that cat sitting there beating on the control the remote control. So this is uh Wolfenstein 2. I believe it, I don't even know if they call it 2. It's Wolfenstein um uh I believe it's called Eye of the Colossus. Uh, but uh, it's not, I thought it was Castle Wolfenstein, but it is not. It is just Wolfenstein. And uh, this game has got a really good pedigree because, uh, you know, the the two games that came before this were both so good. Um, I mean, the graphically, story-wise, the whole nine yards that uh, we really can't, have anything but high hopes for this game and um i'm really excited to see what they do with it it looks like there's a lot of really good interesting things that they're going to do with it uh this as well is on the hades times uh website you can go and look and see the whole trailer and the whole deal uh you know in a higher resolution full audio the whole deal it's great i don't know if that first little sequence is in there though uh, with the with the cat, I'm not entirely sure. I haven't looked at it, so if it's not in there, sorry about that. I didn't want to. I don't want to rev up your hopes and then and then dash them. So uh, this is this was a great great game uh, game reveal. I really appreciated this, and I, I think that this is going to be one of the better titles uh, coming out this year. This obviously and ev the Evil Within two are both uh, going to be landmark titles for. Uh, Bethesda and all of these games everything that you've seen so far is stuff that's coming out this year that's was their motto uh, in this press conference that everything that you see is coming out this year so you know all the VR stuff the whole thing the whole thing is coming out this year which uh, that's really cool uh, it's a it's a different way of doing it I'm very excited for next E3 
when they have a press conference because I'm going to want to see what that stuff is going to be because obviously they can't again say this is all coming out this year. So it's got to be all stuff that's going to be in the future, much like uh, the way that 2016's, you know, like half the conference was stuff was coming out later on in the year and then the other half was coming out the next year. So it's going to be very interesting to see what uh, the next thing is. I'm really surprised that this Wolfenstein thing uh, it was kept such a good secret because, I mean, obviously nobody knew anything about it. Also, The Evil Within 2, also, I you know, no chatter about that or anything like it. Uh, so that's really, really cool that they were able to keep two really big games under wraps. Um, it seems like most uh, publishers are really good at keeping DLC under wraps. Um, just recently, some of the stuff that's come out... Um, from Sony, there were some really big DLC announcements that I was shocked that, you know, there was like, wow, that, nobody, you know, nobody said anything about this. So that's really cool. Really, you know, really excited about all that. Um, and uh, this is going to be really a great game, I think. It's going to be a lot of fun. Lots of, uh, you know, story obviously not taking itself too seriously, which is really cool. And, uh, you know, really excited for uh, the possibilities of this game. Uh, being that it takes place, you know, in the United States and everything else, it's going to be neat to see what another front of this um, fake world is. I uh, just want to let you guys know that this, this stutter, stuttering that's going on, uh, that's coming up here, is, was in the stream. Uh, it was not me. So uh, I don't know what the deal was with it. It just, got, it just kept getting worse. Uh, so again, this footage is up on the website. So if you need to, if this is too distracting for you, uh, just watch it on the, on the website because, uh, it just kept getting worse, but, uh, it did kind of stabilize, um, right after this whole sequence, uh, where they flip over the table, but, um, it, it never came back completely, um, perfect. So, uh, again, if you guys, if this was a big deal for you that you didn't, you know, like, God, this sucks. Um, sorry, that's just the way the stream was at that point. I guess it was a li little laggy or something. Uh, I just really wanted to show off this whole thing where he gets into this this uh, this guy and he starts uh, flamethrowing everything. Because obviously that is in-game footage. You know, this stuff here, we're, we're obviously looking at in-game footage. So that's really cool. Uh, is a nice little cherry on the top for this trailer. And uh, that's going to about do it. This is the end. This is the last announcement. So I hope you guys really are having a good day, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new around here, make sure you hit the subscribe button on your way out. Uh, otherwise, I will see you guys on the next one. We have a lot more coverage coming up for you. Getting this stuff out as fast as I possibly can, but it is a lot of work, so that's why it takes so long. So sorry about that. Uh, hope to have more stuff for you very soon. Uh, thanks, guys, and uh, have a nice day. Bye.